morning. Hello and welcome. A very warm welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here at Bravo 22 Live and brought to us by the Royal British Legion and the Drive Project. And we bring a programme of recovery and well-being through the creative arts. We're open to all serving um, military personnel, former military personnel, wounded, injured and sick and families of all of the above. My name is Lorraine Smith. I've been a military wife for 36 years now, and I've been a Bravo member for six years. I started off in a play called Boots at the Door here in Plymouth, where I live. And um, the last big thing I did was another play called Unspoken, which was performed in the Theatre Royal in Newcastle for a one-off performance. And it ended up actually going on tour. It was picked up. We did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, we went to the House of Commons and lots of other places. It was an amazing thing to do. Um, I've done lots of other things, uh, lots of theatrical skills, creative writing, lino printing, storytelling, improvisation, puppetry and life drawing. Oh yes. Um, it's a great thing to join. It gives you a reason to get up in the morning. It builds your self-esteem, it builds your confidence, and it really helped me through some really dark days um, that I've been through myself. And it can do the same for you. It can really help you. Um, this morning, we'd like to say a huge welcome to the Royal British Legion, who we know are with us today. Um, <clears throat> and we'd like to say a huge thank you to you for bringing Bravo 22 live to us. It means so much to me and to so many others that Bravo 22 is still with us every step of the way when we need it. We really need it right now. Um, so thank you for being with us. Um, we can watch, we can listen, we can take part, we can learn. So a huge thank you to you. Welcome and I hope you enjoy our session. Today's session is brought to us by the amazing talented Alex Julian, who's a visual artist and works in lots of media. And today, Alex will be, be making creative portraits um, from packaging. So Alex, a really big warm welcome to you. Please do keep your questions and comments coming in the comments box during this. And we will now pass over to Alex and she can tell you more about today's session. Thank you. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Lorraine. What a fantastic welcome and hello everyone at home. Thank you so much for joining us today and I really hope you enjoy the workshop today. Please um, try and follow along if you can't or you'd like to watch later. Of course, we're live now, but don't forget you can check in later on the YouTube channel. And um, if you feel you're not actually able to join in, just hope you can enjoy watching and maybe you might pass some of the ideas along to people you know and uh, you could collaborate with them and try and make something. So today we are going to focus on the things I love, which are materials that are cheap and readily available and um, what artists call poor materials, which I think kind of speaks for itself because artists are often poor. So we like materials that are cheap or free. So things we can get from the bin or find in the street or find in the back of a cupboard. Um, those are the things often we like to work with. We're going to be making a simple sculpture out of slotted card. It's going to be a self-portrait, but it is going to be an experiment. So it's just the beginning of an idea that hopefully you can take away and then develop on a little bit. And our theme today, as I said, is self-portrait. So we're also going to be looking at three artists who've enjoyed making self-portraits as well. So that's just to give us a bit of inspiration and to think about what a self-portrait is. So don't forget to send your comments, questions and shout outs. We'll be checking in regularly with you and love to hear from you. So let's start with the materials. So hopefully these are things you can find at home. Scissors. Good sharp pair if you can have them. They don't have to be as big as that. A pen or a pencil or a biro, preferably something black or dark, so a dark, thick pencil is, is good or a felt tip pen or if you haven't got either of those a biro will do and you can just make the lines a bit darker 
So that's fantastic. Or even a pencil. I see Lorraine's got a pencil, which you can also just go over and make a really dark, strong mark. That's what we're going to be trying to do. Sticky tape doesn't have to be this kind. Any kind you can lay your hands on is fantastic. But most importantly, our main material, which is card. So I'm going to give you a few options here. You want a card that's flexible and also that you can fold easily. So probably what won't work is a cardboard box. That's quite difficult to manipulate. But um, this is just from Poundland, kind of cheap cards, not very thick. Um, or for example, here I've got the back of a brochure, which is quite nice because it's white on one side and green on the other. That could be fun. I've just ripped a page from a sketchbook. That's also good. Or if you don't have any of those, maybe something like a cereal packet. If you're using packaging like this, um, what you have to think about is that it's plain on the inside, which is useful, and it's got images on the reverse. So you will have that as part of your sculpture, but that could be quite interesting if you're feeling adventurous. So as I say, this is something to play around with. So how are you doing, Lorraine? You've got all of those things? I've got everything. I'm very organized this morning, Alex. Thank you very much. Yes, That's I've good. got everything ready. Great. Anyone checked in with us yet? Um, we've got shout out to Luke, Sarah, Mick, Sharon, Sally Ann, Paul, Steve, Shirley, Kim, and Ruby. So hi, hi guys. Hello, everyone. Hi, Thanks for joining us. That's wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed today's workshop. I thought it'd be great to actually start looking at some artists who've done self-portraits. So if we could have image one, please, Ian. Thank you. So this is a portrait by an artist called Rembrandt, who was a Dutch painter, and he painted a hundred self-portraits in his lifetime. He, he lived to the age of 63 and he probably started painting and drawing self-portraits when he was about 17 or 18. So what's really fantastic for us in the 21st century is we can see one person's life depicted in paintings and drawings. So we get to see the person, we get to recognize him and we get to see him age, and how, we also get to see how he thinks about himself because in the early portraits, and I've put some links at the end of this workshop so you'll be able to have a look if you're interested, you see this really energetic, quite arrogant young man. And then you see him mature and then you see his fortunes change and then you see him as an old man. So he's showing his vulnerability in this portrait that we see here. And uh, it's really interesting to see that process. If we could have image two, please, Ian, we're going to now see a really different kind of portrait <coughs> painter. Um, this is a woman called Frida Kahlo. She was Mexican. She painted lots of different kinds of paintings, but one of her principal subjects was herself. And she painted 55 self-portraits in her life. And she showed herself in a really different way. Because she was Mexican, she had a real love of symbolism, and objects and she always included these in her self-portrait so often the portrait itself always looks the same it's what's going on around her head that changes but what I think is interesting about Frida Kahlo in relation to what we're doing today is how she shows herself how her features are quite clear they're always the same the mouth is always the same the eyes are the same and you'll notice her eyebrow if you look at her She's got two eyebrows. If you look closely at the painting, yeah. it's one eyebrow. And she was kind of using this as a symbol of herself, like the McDonald's golden arches. So you always know it's Frida Kahlo because you get this strong eyebrow, which is, it's almost like a borderline caricature. So I'm gonna ask you a question, Lorraine. Okay. If we want to make a self portrait normally, What's the most useful thing we could have to hand, do you think? That's a trick question. Oh, I didn't ask you this earlier. No, you didn't <laughs> ask me this earlier. I want to look at our faces. What's the most useful thing? A mirror. A mirror. A mirror. We don't have any mirrors with us today. Rembrandt and Frida Kahlo had mirrors, but we don't. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to show you. Now, if you wear glasses, this is a good time to take your glasses off and only do this if you, if you know your hands are clean. 
And of course, some of you might struggle a bit to do this, so don't worry about it. Just, just you can shut your eyes and kind of join in with us. So first of all, just shut your eyes. And just think about looking at your face in the mirror. Many of you will have done that this morning. You might have had a shave or washed your face or put some makeup on or put some earrings in or combed your hair. So you're looking at something that's very familiar to you. So I want you to just get past that familiarity and really think about what your face looks like. Do you have things you like and you dislike about it? Do you have a big nose or do you really like the shape of your mouth? Or do you like your eyebrows or do you wish they were something different? Or do you have really small ears? There might be all kinds of things you think about your face. If you're able to do it, now try touching your face and take a little journey with your fingertips around your face and particularly focus on the main features. So the eyebrows, the eyes, shape of the eyes, the shape and scale of your nose, the set of your mouth. Does it go up or down or is it crooked? And even stray out to your ears. What do your ears feel like? Ears are quite complex things. I find it very, very difficult to imagine my ears. But what's quite easy for me is I've got little earrings on today so I can feel those. That's fantastic. So hopefully in your mind's eye, you're developing a sense of your face now. How did your face feel, Lorraine? Anything striking? Bony. Bony. Yeah, I do have a bony face. I've got bony cheekbones. I've got a bony chin. I've got a bony nose. I've got bony eyebrows here. What's your tiny ears? <laughs> tiny ears all hidden away behind your hair. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, out of your eyes, nose and mouth, what's your favourite? part of your face um your eyes, nose probably the eyes the eyes yeah you've got really striking beautiful eyes big eyes oh, I, think, I can think of a few artists who like your eyes <laughs> <laughs> let's check in with our viewers anybody uh, got any questions or thoughts or comments so far so i've just got a message here to say that sarah good morning sarah has opted for a cereal box and um Question from Sue, does Alex have a favorite portrait artist? Well, actually great question there because um, it's the first one I showed you, Rembrandt, just because he's such a brilliant artist in, on every level. But I think there's something very honest about the way he showed himself to us because he doesn't always look that great, I have to say. No. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. We're not always showing the best side of ourselves. Um, I'm also, oh, yeah. sorry, Alex. Oh, We've go got, ahead, got a shout out um, for Abby Scott. Who, who, hello, Abby. She's a friend of mine, a choir friend of mine. Please shout out to my brother Noah in Elberton. So, hello, Noah. Hey, hello, Noah. <laughs> Great. Now, I know you're all dying to move on and get something made. Just to lead you into that, I'm going to show you two more images which are really important to look at just before we get going to set the scene, if you like. So if we could have image three, please, Ian. <clears throat> this is uh, a painting of a, a self-portrait by a young man who's 15. And he's an artist who made 50,000 artworks in his lifetime, which is a phenomenal amount of art, uh, but only 14 self-portraits. So he was 15 when he painted this. And if we could now have image four, please, Ian. He was 90 when he painted this. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because you've got this, the first one is very technically good, um, quite striking. And then the, the last one, you think it's almost the reverse. This is maybe the one he made when he was young mm. and the other one when he was old. This artist's name you might have guessed already, you might know was Picasso. And he was one of the world's greatest artists ever. People often say, why was he one of the greatest artists ever? because he reinvented art. He reinvented the way we thought about art, the way we looked at art, and the way we made art ourselves, which leads us neatly on to some making. Are you ready to make, Lorraine? Absolutely, raring to go. Great, so I'm going to tilt my screen down now so you can see a little bit more easily what I'm doing. So here we go, you're gonna lose my face. 
So hopefully you can see that piece of cardboard. So we're going to start with a piece of cardboard. Whatever you've got is fine. And I want, I'm going to ask you to be as neat as you possibly can. Don't worry if it goes a bit wonky. It's, uh, it's absolutely fine. We're going to fold it almost in half, not quite. You see here, I haven't quite gone to the far edge. And then when you've done that, just press it down as hard as you can. You might be able to use your fingernail, or if you can't do that, you might use the edge of your scissors to press the fold. So you get a really nice fold there. And now you can fold it out like that. And you can, if your card is thin, you can tear it along the fold. If you're not confident it's going to tear easily, I would suggest that you cut along the fold. So how's it going, Lorraine, all right? Brilliant, got my two pieces here. Lovely, so you've got a slightly smaller piece and a slightly larger piece. Just I put a slightly smaller one to one side out the way. So we're gonna take the larger piece and turn it this way and we're going to fold it in half. Now, this time we're gonna properly fold it in half. So you're gonna line up the edges. And I've got quite a thick card, so it is quite tough to get a good neat fold, do your best. So it's a bit like a long, long birthday card or something like that. Open it out again. And now you're gonna bring each edge into the center fold. So again, if you've got thick card like me, it's, it's tough, you've got to put your muscles into it. <laughs> and again, I'm going to use my scissors because that really helps. We've got a couple of questions okay. here, actually, Alex. Great. Um, so, uh, Larry, oh, actually, it's just one question from Sally Ann. Larry painted himself at a time of distress and said the next morning he could barely recognize himself. That's really, really interesting reflection. I think sometimes when we make art, we're very immersed in it. You know, it's like a different part of our brain takes over and it's just us and the image that we're making. And as you say, uh, when you pull back, yeah, it's like you're quite surprised often at, at what you've made um, because you've possibly kind of reached into yourself. To, to a place that you don't often think about, maybe. Or you, or... I think that can be covered in lots of different mediums as well, don't you, Alex? That's correct. And, um, you know, I always say, when I'm talking to young people and art students, I always say drawing is the first port of call. It's, it's where you learn your craft as an artist, but yeah. drawing also can be very quick or it can be very slow and it's very portable. You can just have a little sketchbook in your pocket even. Yes. Or sit, you know, even while you've got the TV on, you might just sit and draw. So drawing is a great place to try self-portraits or try thinking about what you want to do. So hopefully you've got now a folded piece of card or stiff paper. Um, you're gonna pull one edge out and just bend it the other way. Sue asked, when did you first become interested in visual arts, Alex? Um, Alex? I'm afraid I was one of those people who never wasn't interested. So <laughs> I don't really remember a moment when I wasn't making art because, of course, most children make art. Yeah. And I think I just went from being a child who made art to a teenager who made art to an adult who made art. So uh -huh. I think I was very, very lucky in that respect. Okay, so... We're now going to, I'm just going to tilt my screen a little higher so you can see. So you should have that shape. We're now going to just bend our card like this. So I'm sort of holding on to a wing here that's sticking out. And this part is like a triangle. Yes, I'm can with you. Can you see that okay? I hope everybody else is with us at home. <laughs> so now you're going to get two pieces of sticky tape. Whoops, it is a bit fiddly, this bit. So you're gonna try and secure. I'll do it and then I can show you. It's probably easier. I might even use three bits of sticky tape because my card is 
stiff and it's got a mind of its own today. So if you find that it isn't sticking well, you can lash on the tape. It's absolutely fine as long as it's secure, which is exactly what I'm going to do because um, it feels like it needs it. Mm, mine feels a bit like that as well. Yeah. I'll, if it falls apart during the making, you can always stick it on again. It doesn't matter. So you should end up with something like that. And it's a good, this is going to be the neck of your sculpture. So it's a good time to test whether it actually stands up or not. And um, the thicker the card, the more likely it will stand up. But um, if you've got thin cards, what will help it stand up is to just make it, make the folds very neat. Okay, I'm really piling on the sticky tape on mine. <laughs> okay. So now... You're going to pinch one of those triangle corners. Pinch it just about five centimeters below the top. And you're going to take your scissors and make a cut. Can you see that? A cut about a centimeter down. Do you think that portraits were the selfies of today, Alex? And that's a question from Shirley. Yes and no. <laughs> I mean, selfies are fantastic, aren't they? They're, they're, they're so immediate. And I think when you watch people taking selfies, they're so inventive with the way they do it. Yeah. And the way they're thinking about themselves in a space. So, yes, I think they're amazing self-portraits. But I think the difference is when you make self-portrait in an art, in art, you really engage with yourself. You really have to think very slowly and carefully about what it is you're trying to show someone or show yourself even. So it's a very, very different process in that respect, even though on the surface, it, it seems like the same thing. So that's a great question. Yes. I often wonder, you know, what would Picasso have done if the selfie was invented during his lifetime? He'd probably have done something incredible with it. I'm sure he would. Okay, so hopefully you've got a neck that's standing up and now come back to your other piece of card or paper and fold it in half and now you're getting really good at this I'm sure you're all doing fantastic folding and neat sharp folds whoops put that down and we're going to just again cut that in half So we've got two pieces like that. So, great, take one of those pieces and cut, a, judge about halfway across horizontally. You're gonna cut about a centimetre down. Well, you can go two centimetres actually, let's make it two centimetres, that'd be better. And then the same with the other one about two centimeters down. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly show you why we're doing that, find my slot. So with the first piece, I'm just gonna move my screen again so you can see. With the first piece, keep your slot at the top and slot it into the slot in your triangle. And fiddle around with it. You need to sort of balance it so it doesn't fall over. Again, it's a little bit harder when you've just got stiff paper. Um, when, when it's card, it, it tends to be a bit easier. And then you're going to take the other piece with the slot at the bottom and you're going to slot it into that. So now you've got an instant sculpture. Okay. <laughs> so you, you might be thinking, how is this a self-portrait? Anyone got any thoughts on that, I wonder? How is this gonna be a self-portrait? It doesn't look much like a portrait at the moment. Okay, so let's just take it apart again. You can put the neck to one side. So this is these parts are going to become our face. So let's start need to get a hold of your pen or your pencil now. So first of all, make sure your slot 
is at the top. This is going to be your face, okay? But you need the slot to be at the top. So you're going to think about, do you remember when you took the journey around your mouth, you're going to think about the shape of your mouth. So my mouth tends to go up one side when I smile. So I'm gonna just draw my mouth like that. But it's not really a face yet. So I think I probably need another feature like, let's have an ear. So I'm gonna put my ear and again, I'm thinking I've got an earring on today. And again, make it really simple, almost like a caricature. Okay, so we're gonna put that to one side. How's it going, Lorraine? Yeah, it's going great. I've even put my little earring in, see? Great. Give myself my earring. Okay. Any questions or comments or shout outs coming through? No, we've not got any questions. Um, so everybody yeah, everything is absorbed, <laughs> I hope, involved in making their self-portraits. So um, we've got a mouth and an ear. Yeah. Uh, we need a nose and an eye, I think. So with this piece of card, we're actually going to put a shape to it. And I'm going to make a sort of nose shape. And you can, you can vary the shape. You don't have to make it exactly the same as mine. Okay. And with this one, make sure, let's bring that up a bit. Make sure your slot is at the bottom. <laughs> really important. The last one was at the top. This one's at the bottom. So we're going to put an eye here. So think about the shape of your eye. I have um, quite hooded eyes. Or, you know, if you wear glasses and glasses are like a really big part of your identity, you might want to do um, part of your glasses frame. But I'm gonna do my eye and I know my eye, it sort of goes down like that and then it's hooded. And I think I'm gonna be looking to the side like that. So I'm looking a bit shifty. And then I think, um, although this creates the nose shape, I'm gonna put a nostril here. I was looking at my nostrils in the mirror this morning just to see what they look like. Not something I normally do. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Lorraine? Got your nostrils, yep. your eye, your ear and your mouth? I've got the eye going on. I've got the eye, a um, little bit of um, eyelashes going along and... Um, yeah, the nostril. Great. Now, as you're just finishing up, I'm just going to say on the neck part, um, you might want to put something on there. For example, if you're wearing a necklace, you might want to show that. Or if you're wearing a stripy T-shirt or um, anything else, you might want to invent something. But I think the trick with this is to keep it very bold and very simple. So we're now going to slot our sculpture together. So you're going to take the piece with the mouth and the ear. Like this. Okay. And again, try and center it so that it stands up. And you might find you want to just bend that wing back a bit just to help you keep it stable. And then we're going to take the second piece, which is the eye and the nostril, and slot it back in. So now we start to have a face. Now, as I said, this, this workshop is just really a beginning of an experiment. So, because we don't really have time to really, really go into all the different things you can do. But what I wanted to do is get you started so that you can see how you can slot pieces of card together to make a sculpture, but you can also start to add different features. So if I were to carry on, I think what I would do is probably add an eyebrow here. And then I would probably think about putting an eye here. Picasso loved to put features in very unexpected places in his paintings and his sculptures. So there you have it. That Again, looks amazing. Slotted sculpture. And of course, what you can do is if you don't like part of it and you want to redo it, you just take it off. 
and you redo it. And that again is the beauty of everyday materials. You don't have to spend a lot of money or time or thought. You can just play around. Uh, and again, that's something Picasso loved to do. So Lorraine, how did you get on with that? I got on really well with it. It's literally just fallen over and just <laughs> fallen to bits. But I did go along and it does stand up. Um, I'm just aware of timings now. Yeah. Um, yeah. We are there. I am aware of timings. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that um, I don't think we've got time for. We may have time for one. Do you think self-portraits are about appearance or about the soul? Oh, that's a great question. I think um, for me, it's probably more about the soul or, or what we might say the inner world of somebody. But of course, you do need to depict what somebody looks like. So it's, it's a really fine balance between the two, I think. That's a great question. Yeah, great question from Al. And just one more from Sally Ann. What is Alex's favourite medium? Cardboard. <laughs> My favourite medium is cardboard because uh, when I was a poor artist, it was always there. It was on the streets and it comes in lots of different varieties. It's incredibly versatile as a material. And um, I love that you can make something of it, you can throw it away, or you can make something that's incredibly precious and detailed and valuable, in fact. So, and card cardboard was one of Picasso's favourite media as well. So um, yeah, that was an easy one to answer, but a great question, thank you. Fabulous, I think we are out of time. Um, there's an artist who makes heads from paper. I wish I could remember them. His name, does Alex know? So that's from oh, Alex. I don't. An Maybe I can try and find out for you. So that's a great way of just reminding you that I've put some links up for you to look at some of the artists' work that we've talked about today. And hopefully you've enjoyed just learning a really simple slotted technique that you can experiment and try out at home. And I'm sure you're gonna come up with some fantastic ideas. Um, if you go online, you'll see some great examples by Picasso that will help with your inspiration and how you can develop this idea. And of course, it's something you can do with family members or friends and you can make portraits of other people as well as yourselves. So thank you so much for having me today. And thank you, Lorraine. Uh, it's been great working with you and thank you for all your questions and um, hope to see you again. I'm sure you will. Thank you so much for being with us today, Alex. You've done a wonderful um, workshop and I think it's been really interesting. I hope that everybody's really enjoyed taking part as much as I've enjoyed taking part in it today so thank you so much Alex and look forward to next time so thank you so much to everybody who's joined us today in particular the Royal British Legion who bring Bravo 22 live to us and we know that you've been there so we hope you've enjoyed and see why we get so much enjoyment out of what is provided by Bravo 22 live um, next week we have a massive surprise, a major surprise on Tuesday. So tune in on Tuesday morning to Bravo 2 to Live, 11 o'clock. Be there or be square. You will not want to miss this. Then on Thursday the 4th, we've got print making with um, the wonderful Gilly Gretton and Matt Whiteman. Uh, it's a printmaking art demo at 11 a.m. on Thursday, the 4th. So put that in your diaries too. And on Wednesday, the 10th at 3 p.m., there's a workshop with Al Johnson uh, designing with colour. Um, so book, uh, email Alice Palmer at the Drive Project .co.uk. Don't forget, guys, please fill in the feedback form at the bottom of the page. Please subscribe to us. It doesn't cost anything. It is free. This is a gift. So please take us up on the gift. Thank you so much again for joining us today. And we'll see you soon. Don't miss Tuesday. Goodbye. <laughs>